Hello and welcome into the second day of the 22nd annual college men's basketball shootout hosted by Eastern Florida State College. I am Brandon Ferguson alongside Curtis D. Acker and we have the Hillsborough Hawks set 6-1 and one going up against the Northwest Florida Raiders at 11-1 and one after they just played a game yesterday. And how does Northwest Florida, Curtis, keep this energy going after an overtime victory yesterday? Right, well, Northwest Florida is the top team coming into the tournament with three-point percentage. They're shooting a near 34% from three, so they just got to keep that going. Tawan Simpkins, largely due to him, he's got nearly a ridiculous 46% from three, so they got to keep that strong throughout the game here today. Yeah, unreal three-point percentage there from Simpkins. Well, what does Hillsborough have to do to pull off this upset against one of the top teams uh, in the Raiders? Right, well, they're the number two rebounding team in all of the NJCAA which is very impressive. They got three players, but there is one player out tonight, Jaden Izomo. He will not be playing tonight's game. He's typically their second best rebounder. So they're gonna need to find a way to fill that gap. However, Jaden Scheider, who's the top rebounder in the tournament, who plays for Northwest Florida, or uh, yeah, Northwest Florida State, He's going to have to do some big work for them in order to counter this Hillsborough Hawks team. And we saw Scheider get into some foul trouble uh, throughout the season. has been in foul trouble, but yesterday actually got fouled out. So what do you think he has to do to stay out of foul trouble? I know uh, Hillsborough is a generally smaller team than Northwest, but how does the big man have to work around to not, not draw le uh, less fouls? Right, just hands up, good defense, move, making sure your feet are moving. Don't be, don't be stagnant, cause, and make sure you're getting that first step because if you're gonna to get to that step first, rather than letting them get there, you're not gonna get a block, uh, blocking charge, you're gonna get, or blocking call, you're gonna get a charging call. Yep, and yesterday we seen Northwest all game, they had a, a, a full court uh, press. So how do you think Hillsborough will respond to a, a full court press? I know they're one of the highest scoring, the highest scoring team in the country. Yes, yeah, nine, 95 points a game. Mm -hmm. So with that full court press that happened yesterday, it's going to be interesting to see in the first five minutes whether Northwest Florida State is going to be able to keep up that same pace that they did yesterday. I think we're going to see that in the first five minutes here, and then the last five minutes as well is when it's really going to count. Yep, and this is Hillsborough versus Northwest Florida coming up on the call with Conrad Walsh and Max Gershon. I am Brandon Ferguson alongside Curtis D. Acker, and we'll see you guys at halftime.
Thank you for coming out to Pike Fieldhouse for day two of the Juco Shootout. The first game is between top ranked Northwest Florida State College and Hillsboro Community College. Please rise and move your hats as we play the National Anthem. It's time to meet the starting lineup for today's game. First, the visitor, Northwest Florida State. Welcome into day two of the 22nd annual Florida Co College Juco Shootout, live from Eastern Florida State and Titan Fieldhouse in beautiful Melbourne, Florida, alongside Conrad Volch. I'm Max Gershon and Conrad, the number one team in the country versus the number one scorer in the country to start day two. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful one today, Max. The last time these two teams played, you have to go back to 2015 which is crazy to think about because normally we would think, oh, that's only like two or three years ago. That was eight years ago. The last, two time, the last time these two teams played, Northwest Florida took home the victory, but that was eight years ago. We're on to today. You mentioned number one score versus number one team. For Hillsborough Community College, they've got Dominic Gooden, a sophomore. He averages just over 30 points a game. He has not scored less than 20 all season long. This will be their eighth game of the season. Also got to look at Cameron James. He's a freshman. He averages just over 20 points a game, 15 rebounds. He had 35 points in their last game, and he averages an 11 and 11. So always looking to get a double-double, but here's the deal. Northwest Florida is very, very balanced. They like to spread it around all over the floor. They had three guys in double figures last game. They had two others with nine. They always stay balanced. That's been Coach DeMeo's philosophy his whole tenure here. But it's one of those things. Number one, you're going to have a target on your back in Hillsborough Community College. They're, they're trying to knock off number one. And who knows? Yeah, it might be a good old-fashioned David versus Goliath, but... 11 and 1 versus 6 and 1. Absolutely. We talked to Coach Dominic Coleman before this game. He was very confident in their ability to defeat this number one seeded team. As we go through the starters, we're set for tip off. Jamal Sumlin, Tawan Simpkins, Rasheed Jones, J Jaden Scheider, and Tavion Banks for Northwest Florida State. And then for Hillsborough, it'll be Dominic Gooden, Cameron James, Jordan White, John Ziegler, and Andrew Rondon as we are ready for some basketball here at day two of the 22nd annual JUCO shootout here at Eastern Florida. It's Northwestern starting off. That one rims out going the other way. It's Rasheed Jones on that layup. Yeah, Northwest Florida's game yesterday, there was eight combined dunks between the two teams. A lot of these teams bring a lot of height, so we'll see how many will be had when this showdown is said and done. It's Northwest Florida team sitting at 11 and one. Lost their first game last Tuesday. Had a 15 point lead yesterday, went to overtime, ended up taking the win. Hillsboro has it. Foul on the play. That is going to be called on Dominic Gooden. Or sorry, Jaden Scheider rather will be whistled for the first foul of the game. 
Yeah, Jaden Scheider, he fouled out in the game yesterday. Has to be careful because he is a huge rebounder for this Raider team. Here's the inbounds play. Cameron James throws it in. Dominic Gooden has it, driving inside. Takes a couple steps, puts it in, and the first points of the board, courtesy of Cameron James. A good little bang-bang play there for the Raiders. Excuse me, for the Hawks. Inside go the Raiders. That is Scheider off the front rim going the other way. Cameron James has it. Spin move cutting inside. Good defense from the Raiders for now. Rondon inside off the front rim again. Raiders pushing the floor. With their speed that they possess, that one is off the backboard. Rebounded. Put it in. That is going to be Jaden Scheider. Wasn't, wasn't pretty, but possessed the offensive rebound and put it right back up into the basket. Again, has to erase that foul from his mind and just play hard. John Ziegler is going to get called for the double dribble. The press... You saw yesterday a lot from Northwest Florida State. They're doing it again, and they get Ziegler with the double dribble. Ziegler, the 6'1 freshman guard from Tampa, Florida. And yeah, when it comes to press, you don't want to do it too often because it'll tire your guys out. But if it's working and, you, and uh, you're making the other team nervous and uncomfortable, continue to do it. Jamal Sumlin has it at the top of the court. Rasheed Jones inside to Scheider. Scheider, the big man for this Raiders team. Back outside in the corner. Tavion Banks. Inside, layup doesn't fall. Going the other way again, it's Cameron James. Has the only points of this game for Hillsborough. Driving inside. They say he stepped out. Another turnover. Ball goes to the Raiders. Yeah, good job there by Scheider to stay off of the of the man that was going towards the out-of-bounds line. Again, fouled out yesterday, keeping it clean thus far after that first foul. Jamal Sumlin's got it. 94% free throw shooter, 40% from three is Jamal Sumlin this year. Rasheed Jones back out to Scheider at the top of the key. Trying to find inside. That is Tavion Banks. Spins, posts up, fade away. Nothing but the backboard rebound by Scheider, and he puts it in. Jaden Scheider gives the Raiders their first lead. Cameron James, aggressive defense. Coach DeMeo's team, that's a floater, and it's good. What a shot there from Cameron James. Has all four so far for Hillsborough. Someone trips up, somehow gets it to Banks, finds Scheider. Scheider posts it up, now kicks it out. That is Jones for three, rolls in. Rasheed Jones with the first three-pointer of the game. Seven to four is our score here early. It's the third different score between these two teams. John Ziegler trying to make something happen. Inside, that is Rondon. Get it back to James. James takes the mid-range, no good. Rebounded by White, and it rolls in. Jordan White with the put-back layup. That was something also that Coach Coleman talked about is their ability to offensive rebound. As again, someone's tripping up. Look at the defense from the Hawks. Step back from Simpkins, his three-pointer, good. Tawan Simpkins with the three-pointer, two straight for the Raiders. Starting to heat up here for the Raiders from that three-point line. Here's Cameron James. The amount of different scores that both teams have. There's a jumper from Ziegler, air ball. Rebounded, they say, out of bounds. Hawks will retain. Last touch by Tavion Banks. Yeah, one of the things Coach Coleman said for the Hawks is they're, they're going to have to play hard and they're going to have to not make any mental mistakes and they're going to have to stay consistent. It's fun playing a number one team, but you have to stay consistent. That cutting inside with Ziegler on the inbounds play, a whistle. They're going to say a travel. Ziegler is second turnover here in the first half. 15.50 to go. 10-6 is our score. 
advantage. The Raiders, so consistent all year. It's this Northwest Florida State team, good defense there by, as Jordan White, Sumlin out to Scheider. Someone spins, outside stolen away by Ziegler. Ziegler passes it away. Another turnover by the Hawks. Wide open in the corner is Rasheed Jones. His three pointer good. Rasheed Jones with a second three of the first half. We have a timeout. You're watching the 22nd annual Florida College's Juco shootout. We'll be right back. Timeout Hillsborough. You're watching the 22nd annual Florida College's Juco Shootout live from Eastern Florida State in Titan Fieldhouse in Melbourne, Florida. Any rebroadcast or other use of today's coverage without the express written consent of Eastern Florida State or the Florida College's Shootout is prohibited. Conrad, 13-6 is our score. Raiders are feeling it from outside the arc. Yeah, the, once they started getting hot from that, uh, from that uh, three-point line, it's starting to fall. And when you give a team like Northwest Florida State that confidence, they're, they're, they're going to take it from you. They only have one loss this season. That was against Daytona State, <coughs> excuse me, 85-79. to 79. But you cannot give this team any sort of anything. You cannot make mistakes because they will, they will take that mistake and they will burn you with it time and time again. Joe Manning on the court for the first time for the Raiders as well as Karan Ifuglu. Inside goes James, saved behind the back, back to James. Top of the key, they're kicking it inside, stolen away by Scheider. Going the other way are the Raiders. Been on fire from behind the arc in the last few possessions. Inside, they get it back to Manning. Manning to Scheider, foul called. First personal for Dominic Gooden. Dominic Gooden, someone we haven't really mentioned yet, but he's the number one scorer in the country with averaging over 30 points a game, Conrad. Yeah, and as I said earlier, he has not scored under 20 points in any of the first seven games. Mm. So someone definitely to, to have to contain and watch out for. First free throw is good from Jaden Scheider. Been really the number one option on offense inside the paint for this Northwest Florida State team. Yeah, he's a big rebounder, but he can also score if you need him to. He's got three games this year where he scored 20-plus 20, 20 points, but his bread and butter is rebounding. He goes two for two from the line. It is said, Mo Basher just subbed in. Denver, Colorado, the freshman, six foot two. Give it right back to him. He's trying to make something happen going inside. The right-handed lay falls. What a pretty layup there for Mo Basher. That'll stop an 8-0 run by Northwest Florida. Saeed Mobasher ends that run. Here's Tyrese Elliott in the, on the court for the first time as well. Joe Manning has it driving inside, loses control. It's out of bounds, going the other way. That's what you want to do if you're Hillsboro. You've got to force Northwest Florida to make uncharacteristic mistakes. But then you have to score on the other end because it's another thing to create that turnover. But if you come up empty, they're just going to go back the other way and, and try and extend their lead back up to eight again. Trey Brown subs in for the Raiders. This is James. Been active early in this game. Mo Basher driving inside, stops, kicks it back out. That's Jordan White. Mo Basher, got to get something, takes the three-point shot, rims off. Rebounded by the Hawks, they get their own board. To the top of the key, it's Jordan White, his three-pointer. Rebounded there by Rasheed Jones. And that's what I'm talking about, they came up empty after a great turnover. Joe Manning, straight inside he goes, the layup falls. Joe Manning's first point of the game. Extends the lead for the Raiders to nine. Oh, 
Stolen away momentarily, and then it's going to be out of bounds. Hawks will retain. Yeah, but you see those this Raider team. I mean, they're they're up by nine right now with 13-10 left in this first half, and they're still playing hard. They're not. They're, there's no turning off of the gas, if you will. It's it's still go 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 because you can never get complacent, and you cannot give anybody any sort of hope because you're the number one team, but you got a target on your back. Will Hines, number 32, checks in the 6'2 guard from Australia as there's a travel called. That was on Dominic Gooden. Seen a couple travels from this Hawks offense and some double dribbles, some costly turnovers. One of the big reasons they're down by nine here, still early, 13 minutes to go in half number one. Tyrese Elliott kicks it back outside and another whistle. It's going to be, look like another travel. That was Ifuglu from Istanbul, Turkey. Whistled for the travel, going the other way. Yeah, he's another great go-to scorer for this Raider team. Uncharacteristic mistake there. Driving inside, James, look at the spin. Off the backboard, no good. Foul, and it's going the other way. We're going to get Andrew Rondon, his first personal. First team foul as well. It's been a relatively clean first half. Only two fouls, one for each team in the first seven minutes and 21 seconds. So can't ask for a better first half. See the Hawks running a little bit of a full court press here. Will Hines taking it up the court. Now it's Tawan Simpkins. He's driving inside. Takes the contact. Back outside for three. It's good. Joe Manning puts up the three. 20 to eight is our score. That's backbreaking for Hillsboro there. Now the lead is up to 12. On the other way, Malik Banks trying to make something happen for the Hawks, trying to get back into this game. Top of the key. Jordan White inside, dishes it. Two Gooden is blocked, and it'll stay here with the Hawks. Just that relentless defense as well as offense for these Raiders. And again, they had an 8-0 run earlier. Now they've got another 5-0 run, and that's what's killing this, this Hawks team is the game of runs right now. Side, they get it to James, played the whole game so far. Run the point guard for Hillsborough. Here's a three-pointer from Jordan White, and he puts it in. Big time three-pointer for the Hawks. They try to inch back into this game. Don't want to live and die by the three if you're the Hawks, but great answer to, to knock this back to nine. Inside goes Hines. High arcing layup, and he puts it in. He fell to the ground. Just so many scorers on this team for the Raiders. Don't know where they're going to come at you. Scheider. Inside, the contact can't finish. He'll go to the line for two. Right, that's Dominic Gooden for the Hawks. The, like we mentioned, number one scorer. Over 30 points per game for Gooden. Sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio. So he goes to the line for two. Yeah, definitely someone you want at the free throw line in Cameron James. He's a, uh, again, averaging 20 points a game, 15 rebounds as well. And um, again, he'll bring you at least 11 points, 11 rebounds a game. He's averaging a double double. Second free throw is good. Taking it up to Juan Simpkins. Makes a move. Going inside. Tough layup. What a block. But they're going to call a foul there. Foul's on number 10. Cameron James, his second. Team's third. Juan Simpkins to one. That's not good for Cameron James. We just heard that's his second foul of the about the halfway point of this first half. And uh, someone that's so versatile on this floor, you just don't, you don't want him to get into too early a foul trouble. Yeah, we got a little roster mix up. 
Sorry about that, everyone. But they had two number 10s on their roster. But now we have it all straight. Number five, Dominic Good, and number 10, Cameron James. As that is Cameron James, who's going to sub out. Yeah, the Raiders doing a good job of keeping this at 10 points or above, and they're not wavering at all, and the Hawks just cannot find something to answer this Raider team right now. Going the other way is Gooden. Takes the jumper, and it's good. What a shot there from Dominic Gooden. That's what he can do, scoring at all levels inside. They're going to get him with another travel. We've seen a lot of traveling in this first in this first half, and you just that's what you got to do if you're the Hawks. You got to force these Raiders to make those uncharacteristic mistakes. But like I said before, you have to capitalize it. Here's Ziegler going up and blocked. What a block there from Tawan Simpkins against the undersized Ziegler. Yeah, ever since that 8-0 run by the by the Raiders earlier, the Hawks have only been able to cut it down to eight, and they've got a lot of work to do. Ziegler's corner three. It's good. Nothing but nylon there from Ziegler. As Hillsborough's got a little run here, trying to cut this game. 23 to 18 is our score with 10-25 to go. Will Hines, guarded by Ziegler. Inside they go. Foglu. Gives it back to Hines, the two international players for this Raiders team. They go right back to Afoglu, his three off the front rim. Going out of bounds. They save it as the time expires on the shot clock. Going the other way is Gooden. His layup is blocked. Again, it was Simpkins. So we are going to have a stoppage. And we will take a break here. You're watching the 22nd Annual Florida College Juco Shootout. We'll be right back. Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. The program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually work in the aerospace field or currently working there. Build a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. Welcome back to the 22nd Annual Florida College Juco Shootout alongside Conrad Volch. I'm Max Gershon here from the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting at Full Sail. I'd like to give a shout out to Full Sail and Eastern Florida State for hosting this tournament, letting us um, call these games and produce and you know, all this is ran by Full Sail students, so it's, a, it's a definitely a pleasure to be able to do this. Yeah, definitely. Some of the best athletes in the United States and international trying to get their name out there to go to the next level, whether it be main, main goal is Division One. Inside they go, the Hawks. Back out Ziegler. That is Mo Basher. Has the big man on him. They're going to give it back to Mo Basher. The little mismatch outside Ziegler. His corner three, no good. That one is going to be out of bounds, and that is last touch by Rondone. Raiders take over. 23-18 our score. And you can see the Hawks were in a decent position to get that offensive rebound. They just mishandled it underneath, but they got they they cannot play as if they're going to get all their points back on one shot. They got to take it in leaps and bounds. Jamal Sumlin back to Scheider, who's back on the court. Try to cut inside. There's gonna be a foul called. That was a errant pass there from Scheider, but Got lucky with the foul call, staying here with the Raiders. This was a 20-8 game about three, four minutes ago. Now all the way to 23-18, Hillsboro. Now making it easy on the number one team in the country. 
Sumlin throwing it in. Finds Scheider. Scheider goes, thought about going back to him, and he does. Sumlin at the top of the key. Sumlin cuts inside the step back jumper. It's good. What a shot there from Jamal Sumlin. Former red shirt at UTEP. D at one all Ohio second team. And as that one's turned over, Scheider going the other way. And Ali Oop and a slam. Oh, the feed from Sumlin was perfect. A beautiful alley oop there from the Raiders. Going inside is good and off the backboard. What a touch. It's the offense really picking up here. Under 10 minutes to play in half number one. And he just showed you right there why he brings in as many points as he does with that move. Tavion Banks gets it back to Jones. Going the other way. Now it's stolen again, but Scheider didn't see it. Little break there from the Hawks. Jordan White in the game. Dominic Gooden has the ball. Point guard for this Hawks team. Gooden guarded by Sumlin. Behind the back goes Gooden. Great defense from Sumlin, but he gives him an inch. Doesn't put it in, but a foul is called, and Gooden's going to line for two. Yeah, Gooden upset that he didn't put that one in himself and go to the line. Yeah, you can tell the amount of heart that he puts in to his team and into this program. I mean, the, the, the stats speak for itself, but when you see how hard he plays on the floor, I mean, it's like I said, he doesn't have a game this season where he scored less than 20, and it shows each and every possession. Absolutely, and kind of a combo guard. He's able to control the floor, be a floor general, and also score at all three levels, and that's something not a lot of players can say and not a lot of coaches can say they have on their team, and... Definitely a luxury for Dominic Coleman in this Hawks team. As he goes two for two on the line. Another cut back down to five for these Hawks. They just gotta continue to build and not, not panic at all. And so far we haven't seen any panic. Back it goes, Rasheed Jones cutting inside, goes back out, the three pointer from Sumlin rims out. Someone trying to chase it down, doesn't get it. Going the other way is, is Gooden. Gooden finds White. White's layup is good. Jordan White, the freshman, cuts the lead to three with 7.32 to go. We'll be right back. Timeout, Northwest Florida. We are back here at Eastern Florida State College. Some fun news here, Conrad, as the college football playoffs were just announced. We got the number one team in the country, 13-0. Michigan will be the one team in the country. Number two is going to be Washington at 13-0. Three is Texas, fighting all the way back to make it with their Big 12 championship. And then Alabama sneaks in after their win against Georgia. So Georgia out of the college football playoffs. And, and I think that's fair. I mean, Alabama was the eighth, was ranked number eight. Georgia was number one. And then some people are probably going to disagree with the Florida State seating, but they're down to their freshman quarterback. They, they held their own against Louisville, but I think the committee got it right. Back to the basketball, though, as Jamal Sumlin's taking it up the court. Rasheed Jones has it back to Sumlin. Lead that was once 12 is all the way cut down to three as the Raiders trying to make something happen. Scheider has it, dishes it even more inside, and that one is going to rim out going the other way. Dominic Gooden. Gooden going inside with the hesitation, the left-handed layup, and the foul. Dominic Gooden. Beautiful layup by Dominic Gooden. The blocking foul on Jamal Sumlin is second, the team's fourth. <coughs> and for a game that was 20 to eight, now 27 to 26, I mean, this is as great a scoring run as you can make it, an 18 to seven scoring run by these Hawks. You just look at 
you know, players on both these teams, especially on the court right now, the Raiders have height advantage on almost every single position, which is the grittiness of this Hawks team has led them to come back with a chance to tie it, their best player at the free throw line and Dominic Gooden. Well, it's like, it's like Coach said for Hillsboro, you cannot get complacent. You have to play hard. And, it, and for them, they don't care who's on the floor. They're going to play hard each and every possession. Tyrese Elliott back in the game. Tyrese Elliott received a lot of offers from some bigger name schools like Ole Miss, Alabama, Mississippi State before he committed to NCA and t and then ultimately transferring over here to Northwestern Florida State. That's Simpkins inside. Looked like a walk. They're going to get him for a walk. Another travel is called. That was Tavion Banks. Gets called with the shuffle. And Tavion Banks was a key piece for this Northwest Florida team against Florida Southwestern State in overtime. He scored the first four points in that overtime period. Ultimately, they won 74-67, but this team is making uncharacteristic mistakes right now. The trap right there from Northwestern Florida State right in front of the booth. Dominic Gooden has it. Gets it to Rondone. Back to James. James makes a move. Trying to find someone, it's back to Gooden. Gooden, a deep three off the rim, no good as the shot clock expires. Aaron pass, Tyrese Elliott has it. Scheider inside, Banks lays it in. That's what great players do. Banks just erased that from his mind, went and scored because you can't dwell on something like a travel for too long. Tavion Banks, the 6'7 sophomore out of Kansas City, Missouri. Tough layup. Goes in for Jordan White. Jordan White. This has just turned into an all out firefight between these two teams. And again, this was 20 to 8 Northwest Florida at one point. Rasheed Jones, we saw hit a bunch of threes earlier on in the game. Been quiet since. Into the corner, wide open three. It's not good, it's gonna roll out. Looked like it was gonna go in for a second. Tyrese Elliott. Into the corner, another three. That one falls for Tawan Simpkins. 46% from three is Tawan Simpkins as he adds to that tally. The combo guard from Brooklyn, New York. Dominic Gooden has it again. Siegler three, rims out. Offensive rebound, but it's gonna be out of bounds off of Andrew Rondone. And the head man for this, for this refing crew, Sean Bryant, was right underneath it to point in the direction of Northwest Florida. But, but now this has been a, just a competitive game between these two teams. And at one point when it was 20 to eight Northwest Florida, it looked like what Northwest Florida has done for most of the season. You know, they're gonna pull away, they're gonna maintain that lead, but they, this, this Hillsborough Community College team, they, they don't care what the score is and they don't care who they're playing. They're gonna play you hard. They, and they're, as, as, as what Coach alluded to earlier, it, as long as they don't get complacent, they're gonna, they're a dangerous team to contain. Absolutely, and fans, make sure to watch our second game uh, broadcast today at 2 p.m. Gulf Coast State College will be taking on St. Petersburg College, two teams that played yesterday. Will be our final game of the day two coverage of the JUCO shootout, which has just been a great tournament so far, and um, hope it continues, and it has today. Well, yeah, and it, you know, great things about not only a JUCO shootout, but JUCO in general is these guys, they're hungry. You know, they only get two seasons pending they take a redshirt year to, to, to showcase themselves or advertise themselves, if you will, for that next level. A lot of guys want to go D1, you know, but there's other opportunities, D2, D3, NAIA, or whoever is out there. You, but this is the thing. You see these guys, they're playing hard. We've only seen one dunk today, and that was by Northwest Florida, but you know, it's the best of the best trying to go a little bit higher, and it's great on great basketball. Absolutely, and you know, like you mentioned, two years for these players, they get a chance. Um, again, last year, they were uh, Northwest Florida State runners-up in the NCJAA tourney. As there's a layup, the foul, does it roll in? No. That was Ifuglu on the lay, didn't fall. Foul's 
Nine committed fouls in this first half. Nobody's in the bonus yet, but that's the second foul call there on Andrew Rendon. Team's fifth. Go to the line for two. Freshman from Istanbul, Turkey. Knocks down the first one. Second one falls as well, two for two from the line. 34 to 29 is our score. 426 to go here in half number one. Lob up in the air. Caught, brought down, but no good on the layup there from Cameron James. Pushing up the floor, Tawan Simpkins gives it back to Foglu. Tyrese Elliott takes the jumper, puts it in. Tough shot there from Tyrese Elliott. The mid-range falls, standing the lead back to seven. Raiders are starting to feel it again. They extended their lead back up to seven. James gives it to Gooden. Gooden back to James inside, trying to make something happen. Takes a step, puts it up, rims out. Rebound by Simpkins. Simpkins guarded by Gooden, gets the screen from Afoglu. His three-pointer rolls in. Tawan Simpkins, and now the Raiders are firing on all cylinders once again, Conrad. And just like that, it's back to 10, 39 to 29. Dominic Gooden needs to make something happen for this Hawks team. Cameron James spinning, loses control of the ball, has it on the ground. They're gonna get a timeout. Gooden laying on the ground, was yelling for a timeout. It was granted. Granted by Charles Howell Jr., Jr. the official. So we have a timeout. So we'll take another break here on the JUCO shootout. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the 22nd annual JUCO shootout here at Eastern Florida State College. Alongside Conrad Volch, I'm Max Gershon. Back to a 10-point lead, Conrad, as you know, Hillsborough got it close. They cut it to within one at one point. Now back up to 10 as they have no stopping this Raiders shooting. Yeah, and to your point, Max, I mean, this, this first half has been a game of runs in favor of Northwest Florida. They had an 8-0 run earlier, a couple 5-0 runs as well, and now they're in a 10-0 run, and it's so hard when you're Hillsboro. You, you work so hard to come back from being down 20-8, to eight, and now you're back into a deep hole again. Ziegler looking for someone on the inbounds. Get it back to Ziegler. Hit a corner three earlier. His jumper, no good. And is rebounded by Trey Brown. Tyrese Elliott going the other way. The Foglu, his three-pointer, no good. Rebounded by Trey Brown, and he puts it in. Trey Brown just subbed in, gets his first two points of the game. These Raiders are in perfect positions and right place, right time to put that missed shot right back in. Dominic Gooden. Played the majority of this first half as Dominic Gooden. Country's leading scorer, his floater, no good. Trying to get his own rebound, it's out of bounds, staying with the Hawks. Chip Clark, the official, right on top of it, pointing right back to the, to the um, Hawks' side. And uh, both of these teams playing hard and fighting for every possession they can get. It's Gooden on the throw in. Gets it to James. James driving inside, no good. Swatted away by Brown. Right to Mobasher, his layup. And that one rims out as well. Rebound Simpkins. Simpkins to Jones. Look at this, Rasheed Jones, three straight 1,000 point seasons in high school. Very impressive there. Yeah, that's, uh, most guys are happy to get 1,000 points in high school, period. Yeah, absolutely, transferred in June from Western Carolina. Did Rasheed Jones has had a couple threes earlier on in this half. 
Haven't needed his production as much since. 41-29 is our score. Yeah, this is still a 12-0 run here by this Raider team. Hawks have to figure out a way to stop it and go on a run of their own. Malik Banks checked in for the Hawks. Gooden's got it, guarded by Brown. He's gonna get a screen by James, doesn't take it. Hops inside, kicks it back out. Jordan White trying to make something happen. Great defense from the Hawks, that one does not count. Wouldn't have mattered as they hit the backboard and great defense there from the Raiders. Well, and to the Hawks' point, I mean, that was just too many passes. At some point, you gotta, you gotta look up at that shot clock, whether, whether you see it briefly or you have a full second to look at it, you just gotta launch it because it, even if it misses, as long as it hits that rim, you're not gonna get a 30 second violation and allow the Raiders to, to regroup and, and you know get, get, get some communication. Jones taking it up the court, guarded by Gooden. Jones, outside, Trey Bounds three. And it's gonna be an air ball. Save, what a save it was. Unbelievable save right there from Will Hines. And it was Ifoglu who put it in on that save. Tyrese, sorry, Dominic Gooden with the ball. Cameron James, spinning one, spinning twice, and a tough layup there. Cameron James. That'll stop the 13-0, or excuse me, 14-0 run by the Raiders. Like you said earlier, it's just been a game of runs really for both teams, but favoring this Northwest Florida team. Inside they go, Trey Brown, tough layup, can't get it. Tips it back in with the offensive rebound and the putback, extending the lead to 14, 30 seconds remaining in half number one. Yeah, team first mentality for the Raiders. We're seeing that from Hines. He did not play at all yesterday, so to see him get some quality minutes here and to contribute well is great to see. Gooden inside of James. James, spin move that's been working so well tonight. That one doesn't fall. Rebound by White, and there's going to be a foul called. Jordan White's going to go to the line for two. Fouls on number 32, Will Hines, his first, he's fifth. Get Will Hines with that foul. Jordan White, freshman from Rockledge, Florida. Most of these players for Hillsborough, for Hillsborough are from Florida. First one doesn't fall. And that's a thing for the Hawks. You have to take advantage of free throw opportunities because there's been 10 fouls called in this first half between the two teams. But other than that, it's been a relatively clean first half. Second one falls, one for two from the line. Six seconds left, Tawan Simpkins has it. Three seconds, they give it to Afoglu, his three-pointer no good, and that will end half number one of the first game of day two of the second, 22nd annual Florida Juco shootout. 45 to 32 is our score. Conrad a half of runs like we mentioned, and what's it gonna take for Hillsborough to get back in their rhythm that they were in for a, lo a long time in the first half? Well, Max, it's like I said earlier, they have to capitalize on mistakes. And you saw when they forced Northwest Florida to make to make mistakes that that they don't normally make, they, they, they were successful, but they have to score. It's one thing to do all that work on the one side, but if you can't get two, three, or shoot even one free throw to go in, it's, it, it's, it's almost like an all for nothing type play. So they have to continue to capitalize. They have to play hard and be relentless and they cannot get down on themselves or panic either. It's half number one, like we mentioned in the books, 15 minutes till half number two. We're gonna send it to Noah Latch, who's with Coach DeMeo.
in the, in the second half. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. I think we had some technical issues with the audio, but that's going to end half number one. 13 minutes till half number two. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back on the JUCO Shootout, second 22nd annual. State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. The program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field or currently working in the aerospace field. Ferguson alongside Curtis the Acker for a halftime show here in Eastern Florida State College. Now, Northwest Florida leads 45 to 32, and they went on a 16 to 3 run, Curtis, uh, going into halftime. So, how did they do that? Yeah, well, Tawan Simpkins started making some threes. He had one early and then two later on. He started, and, he, and he had a couple big blocks right at the end there. So that was a big defensive effort on his part to really shut down Hillsborough, which, as we said, his average is almost 95 points a game, and currently they're held at 32. And speaking of blocks, what did you see from both teams defensively in the first half? Well, I saw a lot of doubling. I saw some really good play on both ends, and it led to some sloppy offense. There's seven turnovers for Northwest Florida State and eight for Hillsborough. And Northwest Florida, they kind of ran a full-court press zone uh, kind of deal for about three minutes in the first half and then they went back to their normal defense right um and with their normal defense Jaden Scheider is always a huge impact player for them what did he do in the first half yeah well he contributed all over the place not just defensively he got a couple good offensive rebounds and then he ended up having a beautiful pass in the uh in the later half of the first there to set up an assist and He's just been fantastic on all ends. And he's not really getting into foul trouble right now, which is something we were concerned about at the beginning of the game. Yep, Dominic Gooden averages 30 for this Hillsborough team. He's in double digits right now. What kind of shots is he searching for? What does he have to keep doing to keep this uh, Hillsborough team in this game? Yeah, 11 points here in the first, unofficially, but that's what we have on the stats. And he's looking to crash. He's, he's finding lanes and getting to the to the net, and he's ended up getting gotten to the line once. I think he's got to continue to do that and hopefully get the three ball involved as well. He's only taken one, and he missed that shot. And there was a point in this game where it was 29-29, to 29 and with that 16-3 to 3 run like we mentioned, it just felt like Northwest Florida could score at will. And, and that's what they did coming out of this, uh, going into the second half. And on the call, Max Gershon and Conrad Walsh. And for me, Brandon Ferguson and Curtis D. Acker, we'll see you guys on post game.
Welcome back to the 22nd Annual Florida College's JUCO Shootout Live from Eastern Florida State alongside Conrad Volch. I'm Max Gershon. Conrad, 45-32 as we're about set to begin half. Number two in the number one team in the country, Northwest Florida State, is ahead. Yeah, no, they've been taking advantage of the game of runs. They had a 8-0 run in the beginning of the first half, a couple 5-0 runs, a 10-0 run. They finished that first half on a 16-3 run, so they... Hillsborough Community College has been making a bunch of mistakes, and Northwest Florida has been taking advantage. Spin move again, and that is Cameron James. We've been seeing him do that spin move all day long. It's been working very efficient. Efficiently. Woof. <laughs> Efficiently. Words are hard. Max. It's hard sometimes, you know. That is Tavian Banks having as it at the top of the key. They give it back to Rasheed Jones. Simpkins, who had a big first half. He does a spin move, and then a mid-range is good. Good touch there from Tawan Simpkins. A good first half. Let's continue that, and he's off to a good start. As Gooden gets that back out to Cameron James. James to Gooden. Jordan White. Loses control, going the other way. Lobbed up in the air for Rasheed Jones with the contact and the foul. Rasheed Jones going to line for a chance at three. That's another big foul for the Hillsborough Community College because Randone just picked up his third foul and we're a minute and five seconds into this second half and you know this judging by what we see on our rosters and on that bench, they don't have as many players as Northwest Florida does, so they're going to have to be, he's going to have to be careful going forward. Jones couldn't capitalize on the end one opportunity. Here's Gooden going inside. Left-handed layup, doesn't go in. Rasheed Jones, it's an inside. Looks like a foul is going to be called on Gooden. And going to line for two is Tawan Simpkins. And that's one thing for Hillsborough you don't want to do is start getting frustrated and causing even more fouls because yeah. you're down by 15, but one thing you learn about college sports is no lead is safe, and if you get going on a run and switch the momentum, you can get right back into it. We saw what happened with Northwest Florida yesterday against Florida Southwestern State. They had a 10-plus a point lead, and it was, it was extinguished. They had to shoot it. They had to shoot two free throws to tie it up to go into overtime. Ultimately, they they won 74-67. But North Northwest Florida, they have proven that if you get them on a tear and make them make uncharacteristic mistakes, they can become a vulnerable team if you do it right. Two quick fouls on the other side of the court by the Hawks. Here's Gooden. Go back outside. Jordan White to Gooden. Right on the. Titans logo here at Eastern Florida State College. Gooden. To the corner, it's a three-pointer. It's no good, that was Saeed Mobasher on the three. Rasheed Jones takes it up the court. Defense right there from Mobasher inside. Tipped away, Ziegler saves it. There's going to be a kicking call. That was, a late, that was a late call on the kick there. Because yep. uh, by the time they made that call, um, Ziegler had already, well, at least what we thought, made, made possession. But luckily the referees can see a little bit closer than we can, but it's just a late whistle there. Inbounds Rasheed Jones. Someone kicks it out wide. That is Banks for three. No good. Rebound Someone. Now it's Banks. Banks going inside. Lays it in. Tough possession there from Tavion Banks. A good offensive rebound from Jamal Someone. Ziegler has it cutting inside. And it's blocked by Banks. Banks doing it on both ends of the court. Rasheed Jones has it. Slows it down. And now Banks thinks about a three. Kicks it out. Simpkins... Off the front iron, gets his own rebound, but now it's Mobasher going the other way. Saeed Mobasher. 
coming off the bench here tonight, today. No shot on the court is where they'll call the foul before he went up for the shot. Jamal Sumlin gets his third personal. Yeah, another guy that Northwest Florida does not want to foul out. Great player. Got three. Said Mobasher to Gooden. Hesitates, takes a step. Layup doesn't fall. They'll call a foul. And they'll say Gooden. They need to give him the two free throws. Looks like it's going to be on the baseline. It'll be a throw in. That foul will go against uh, Tavion Banks, his first. Both teams with two team fouls. Good. Looks like he might have gotten away from a, with a walk. Ziegler gets it back to Mo Basher. His drive and a foul is called. Another foul. There's been now two for each team already. Just four minutes into this second half. Foul's on number 10, Jimmy Scheider. His second team's third. So Mo Basher will go to the line for two. It's three quick fouls for this Raider team here in this second half. And Scheider's done a great job to stay clean since that early foul. I believe his first foul came within the first minute and a half of action. Again, fouled out yesterday, but kept it really clean. Picked up his second one there. But this, uh, this Raider team, they are leading by 18, and they've limited, they've limited Hillsborough to only three points coming out of this half. They get three fouls now to two here in just our second half. Scheider inside to Banks. Back to Scheider. Tough pass. Someone has it. Someone driving inside. The foul. No shot. It did go in, but they'll say before he went up. Looks like they're going to get uh, John Seigler again with the foul. Scheider has it in the corner. Another dangerous pass from Scheider. Now it's back to Jamal Sumlin. Gets the screen, Scheider. Sumlin hesitates to the corner, wide open. Rasheed Jones hits another corner three. That's been the shot, shot Rasheed Jones has been knocking down all day. Hits another three pointer. Extends the lead now, 21 points. We're gonna have a kick ball. It's the second kickball violation we've seen in this second half, one for each team. So both of these teams getting a little antsy. Gooden gets the screen from James. Now trying to find James, turns it over, going the other way is Banks, and he's going to throw an errant pass and head it back to the Hawks. Yeah, it's been a little somewhat sloppy for both teams, but again, the desperation of the Hawks is starting to sink in just a little bit, and for Northwest Florida, just, just play your fundamental game and don't do something that you're not used to doing. Do your job. 11-3 run since the half started for Northwest Florida State. Inside, that's James. Back out, Ziegler's corner three off the front rim. His shot has not been where Hillsborough wants it to be today, and that one is a tough layup and a foul is called as Banks hits the deck. Be the fourth team foul for Hillsborough here in the first less than five minutes. We'll see who this is on. It's going to be on number 15 of Saeed Mobasher. So his first foul. So Banks will go to the line for two. Misses the first one. Tavion Banks. Been pretty active so far in this game. Kind of that stretch forward in this Raiders lineup. Makes the second, one of two. So we have a substitution coming on the floor. Brandon Sinclair for the first time tonight. Subs in for Banks. Sinclair, the 6'10 center out of Mount Vernon, New York. Gooden has it. He is triple teamed. Gets it to James. All the way to Mo Basher. And he's going to walk. Another travel called going the other way. And we are going to have 
a media timeout. You're watching the 22nd annual of Florida College's Juco Shootout. We'll be right back. a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies, with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. Welcome back here to Eastern Florida State College, home of the Titans. It's the Northwest Florida State Raiders versus the Hillsboro Hawks here at game one of our doubleheader coverage of the JUCO shootout. 22nd annual alongside Conrad Volch, I'm Max Gershon, and 57-35 with 14.50 to go in half. Number two is our score, Vantage Raiders. It's the game of runs I keep talking about. Raiders on a 12-3 run coming out of this, coming out of the the halftime, and it's just there. There's no stopping. They they just continue to play their game, and they're forcing Hillsboro to make even more mistakes. Because you can kind of see the frustration on Hillsboro. They they had it. They tied it at one point at, tw at 29 apiece, and it just has not clicked since that first half. Fifth personal or fifth team foul rather by the Hawks here early in this first half. That's going to be trouble as Hines step back three, no good off the front rim, rebounded by James. Gooden taking it up the court. Gooden with a step back, nice move, the jumper, no good, rebound Hines. Hines full speed ahead, now he stops on a dime, gives it back to Rasheed Jones. Hines, the Aussie is Hines. All the way across, that is Simpkins, his three-pointer, no good, rebounded. That is Sinclair, it's on the ground. A lot of people fighting for it, now they're gonna call a jump ball. Possession arrow is going to make it stay here. And one thing we see with this Raider team is they pass the ball everywhere. There's no, there's no one person that's, that's your leading scorer or your you know, your go-to. It's it's almost like the Golden State Warriors teams when they started in 2015 through those runs where they went to three titles in five years. I mean, you know, there's there, it's unselfish basketball. It's team first, and you don't know who to double up on. Look at this wide open three again, and Rasheed Jones stays on fire with his corner threes, pushing the lead now up to 25. 60 to 35, the Raiders have completely taken control of this game as Gooden's layup is good. Showing why he's the number one scorer in the league with that tough layup. will stop another 7-0 run by these, by these Raiders. Hines has it at the top of the key, trying to make something happen. Gives it to Sinclair, who missed the wide open layup. It's gonna stay here, though. It's a shot you'd think Sinclair's really gonna want back. Wide open layup on a great feed, too, by Hines. Well, and that's the thing, too. If you're, if you're Sinclair, you, gotta, you just gotta erase it. And, you know, this is a, it's a missed opportunity, but just go on to the next one. Here's Scheider. We saw a lot more of in that first half than we have so far here in half number two. Going inside is Simpkins. Back out, Jones. Another three. He's got it again. Rasheed Jones on fire from behind the arc. Has the Raiders bench dancing over there, Conrad. Looks like a, some TikTok videos are being had. <laughs> Still on the ground. Another fight for it. Possession arrow is going to stay here. So we're going to have another timeout. 63-37 is our score. You're watching the 22nd annual Juco shootout. 
Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. The program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field or currently working in the aerospace field. Welcome back to the 22nd annual JUCO shootout. 63-37 is our score. The Northwestern Florida, Northwest Florida State Raiders have completely taken over this game. You know, they led early by, you know, it's a similar amount, but then Hillsborough with a couple great runs to put them back in this game, and it's going to need to be an even greater run if they want to come climb back from this deficit. Oh, yeah, Steve DeMeo, I mean, he is he's a great coach. I mean, he's coached here before. He coached for Northwest Florida from the 2013 season all the way up until 2018. Went up to Division I for a couple of seasons, came back. But in his tenure with this, with this Raider team, he's 210 and 36 with this team. He's won national champions for junior college back in the um, 2014 season and was runner up last year. And he just, he's only ever had two losing seasons in his coach, in his head coaching career, but None of those came in his now his second stint with Northwest Florida. So he 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 knows how to have a well-oiled group of guys. So that one's going to go off the backboard. It's going to stay here. Not sure exactly what happened there. I don't know if you saw that, Conrad. Looked like one of the guys from Northwest Florida touched it and it hit the backboard on the opposite side. Good find there from Siegler, and the layup and the foul. There's Dominic Gooden, number one scorer in the country. Can't emphasize that enough, and they're gonna need a lot more of that from him if they want to fight back. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where, you know, for Northwest Florida, they they don't have like a a leading the country guy like that, which is fine because for for their coach, Coach DeMeo, he wants it to to spread around because he told us in the yeah. pregame, he doesn't he wants you to guess. He doesn't want you to double up on somebody because because it keeps you guessing, it keeps you honest. Absolutely, he said that you know he wants four or five guys in double digits or as close as possible to that. Did a pretty good job spreading the ball. There's gonna be an offensive foul on Sinclair, who's not happy. You know, it's crazy. There was 10 total fouls in that first half, and we've got 10 with 835, yeah. excuse me, math, 735 <laughs> left in the second half. So a little bit more, a little bit more foul happy, if you yes. will. But, you know, the, the urgency for, for, I think, for both sides is starting to set in. Well, you know, we saw a bunch of travels in the first half, and those were really the majority of the whistles. It's, look at that move from Gooden going inside, in and out, rebound Scheider. Great defense there by Hines to stay off and not, not have a, a foul of his own there. Jamal Sumlin has it. You know, talking about Dominic Gooden, he's just a guy that he's what you'd call a bucket. You know, you know what I mean by that, Conrad? Just he can get he can score at any level. He's gonna be he's gonna get the tough buckets, he's gonna get the easy ones, and he's gonna put his heart out on the floor. It's definitely what we've seen so far in this game from Dominic Gooden. Doesn't matter, they're down twenty three. It doesn't he's not playing any different than he did when they were within one point. Well no, and that's the thing with, with great players is they a lot of them know how to turn it on when they need it, but for him it's on all the time. You don't need to hype him up or whichever. His as soon as he steps on that on that on that wood floor, it's it the switch is turned on before the game's even started. Good and gives it to Ziegler. That is back out to White. To Gooden driving inside, kicks it out. White's open three. No good. Rebound Sumlin. And there's gonna get a jump ball, and that's gonna stay here. Nice play there from John Ziegler. He's another guy that's been speeding across this hard this hardwood. He there was one play he was flying across the the center line and he looked kind of had some flashes of Jose Alvarado. You got to watch <laughs> out for him. Inside White one hand brings it down. That's actually that's going to be good. Oh, look at that collision. It's Cameron James that hit the deck. 
Fancy Foglu that hit the deck as well, and you saw him fall. He hit the his head so hard, his headband fell off. So we hope he's okay there. But um, that uh, that hardwood is not something to mess with or to play with there. And uh, that'll be the first time a team will be in the bonus today, as as it was. Like I said, there was only there was ten fouls in that first half, five for each team, and now we've got that 11th one that'll put that'll put uh, that'll put the that'll put somebody in the bonus and that'll they'll be in the bonus for the rest of the game 1132 remaining in the second half you see uh, Sinclair go up to a Foglu after show him a couple numbers make sure he can still see straight looks like they're gonna sell him out though just to be safe about it Tawan Simpkins is gonna check in yeah especially at this point in the game you don't want to take any more risks if you, if you can help it because you know it's it is a it's a 23 point game right now 63 to 40 and they they've only allowed Hillsboro to score eight points throughout this throughout these first eight and a half minutes this is Jamal Sumlin inside loses control takes it back out Sumlin to Simpkins Simpkins Kicks it out to Manning. Manning's high floater is good. Joe Manning, who's seen his minutes rise over, over the last few games for Northwest as Gooden is going to try to lay that one in. It goes off the rim, and a foul is going to be called. It's going to be on Northwest Florida. And yeah, we see a member of the athletic training staff over there looking at looking at uh, Ifoglu, making sure he's okay, and Again, we saw him get both those players fall to the floor, and but Ifoglu looked like he hit his head pretty hard. But again, we hope he's okay and he's up walking around. But I think I think it'd be a wise decision to just have him sit for the rest of this game. See him trying to walk it off. He's holding his lower back right now. As it is Cameron James at the line. Twelve fouls already, Conrad here. And Half number two. Yeah, seven for seven for Northwest Florida, five for Hillsboro, and Hillsboro gonna is in the bonus for the rest of this game. And Rondon for Hillsboro is now hit that fourth foul, so one more and he is done for the day. And that's the thirteenth foul of this second half. Seven for Northwest Florida and now six for Hillsboro. One more and both of these teams will be in the bonus. Will Hines taking it up the court. Hines with a drive, left-handed layup is good. Will Hines, what a basket there. He's showing some flashes of athleticism. The six foot two Australian inside the slam. Cameron James. And now pushing the other way. Some fast paced basketball now as Joe Manning gives it back to Will Hines. Hines driving in. Hines finds Jones at the top of the key. Here's the three pointer from Sinclair. Nothing but net. Brandon Sinclair with a three pointer. 70 to 43 is our score. It's Gooden's driving inside to James. James, 10 footer, no good. Rebounded and put back up by Andrew Rondone. Andrew Rondone. It's going to come down to if Hillsboro can get a couple stops and try to get a run going themselves, but it's going to be a, it's going to take a lot of those. Definitely. Tawan Simpkins gives it. Here's Jones. Now an open three for Will Hines off the front rim. No good. Rebound good. Gooden taking it up the court, pass it away, stolen by Hines. Hines giving it to Simpkins. Simpkins layup, a lot of contact and the foul. Simpkins goes to the line for two. And judging by the reaction of Rondone, that could be his fifth. But we'll see what the final, final call is here from yep. our referee of Chip Clark. Five fouls and one more away from fouling out. So with that foul, each team was seven, and that'll put uh, Northwest Florida 
in the bonus. We're supposed to be in the bonus. We've got the bonus light on for Hillsborough Community College, but they haven't lit up the bonus light yet. But now we've got 14 fouls, four more than than that first half, and it's just been a it not I don't want to say utter domination, but it, it's just you know we talk about Northwest Florida being the number one team, and they're they're showing why they are. Yeah. And, you know, Hillsborough Community College, to their credit, kept up with them a lot in that first half. At at one point, they were down 20 to eight. They cut it, they cut it all the way back. It was 27-27, then 29-29. But that last run that made it 45 to 32 um, at the end of the first half. I mean, that just it, ever since then, it's just it's been all Northwest Florida. But I mean, got to give credit to this Hillsborough Community College team. They you know, despite what the scoreboard is, it's they're not. There's no backing down. They're they're trying things, and there there's no quit. I mean, it's it's one of the, it, again when you face a number one team, you have you cannot give them, you can't give them anything. Yeah, that's a that's a thing I think a lot of teams do without realizing is you give them points before they've even scored them, and you know for this Hillsborough Community College team, it's a great game to it's a great game to learn things learn where you're at and get you ready for the rest of the season. Absolutely, and you got to give credit to Coach DeMeo's game plan that we talked to him about, and that was getting multiple people close to double figures. We've seen a bunch be really productive. We saw early on Jaden Scheider was really the number one guy they were looking for, um, and then we've seen Rasheed Jones, obviously, with a barrage of three-pointers, and then even more recently we've seen Will Hines getting involved with the scoring. Both free throws will fall for Tawan Simpkins, another guy that's been pretty commonly on the board. And that's a turnover. Will Hines gets the steal again. Hines going all the way down the court. The layup is good. Tough bucket there from Will Hines. He's taking full advantage of his opportunity today, and he is anywhere and everywhere all the time for this Raiders team. as that is Malik Banks in the game for the second time today. Inside, they give it to James. James, underhand toss, the reverse layup doesn't fall, but a foul is called on Sinclair, who hasn't played a lot, but he's getting time in the second half, and he's had a couple fouls now. Yeah, that's his third personal, and he's only played about 10 minutes. Yeah, just the sometimes the lack of playing time or lack of experience shows, but in a game like this, it's you just got to – Stay disciplined and be patient and, you know, let it come to you because, you know, as we've said, Hillsborough might have that, f that frustration for being as far down as they are. But on the, on, the, on the Northwest Florida side, you have to stay contained and you have to just be yourself and, and know your limits and know your skills and play to that. Because if you try to do too much, then you're going to get yourself into foul trouble like Sinclair is right now. But I think, you know, just take a breath, calm down, and he'll be fine. Will Hines has it. The alley-oop to Sinclair. It'll roll in. Beautiful feed from Will Hines, who's doing a little bit of everything. Two steals, couple assists, and a couple buckets as well. Yeah, he is, he's been the, the fire for this team off the bench. We're going to have a stoppage. Subs come in. Raiders have the ball. Ziegler will sub out. Mo Basher comes back in. He's pressing up on Will Hines. Will Hines kicks it out. The three-pointer, Jones, no good. A foul is called. That's going to be a three-point foul, I believe. Even, even uh, Rasheed Jones didn't even think that was a foul. He gave him a little smile after that call. That's going to be on Jordan White, his first. Will Hines, listen, I mean... Not just because he's Australian, but his game reminds me of a lot of Joe Ingles. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of Joe Ingles, kind of the fancy assist, but also you know can get. He's not he's not too flashy, but but he's good enough. He gets the job done. Well, that's the thing is when you're when you know what you're good at, do it absolutely. Because you can always work on what you're not good at, but when you're in the game, you know do what you know you're good at, and that's what he's doing. And he's he's playing fast, yes. but he's also playing efficient, and he's throwing guys open. I mean, he had that one underneath the hoop where I don't know how he found uh, – I don't know how he found Jones 
at the three-point line before Jones passed it yeah. for a three because he had like three guys in his way and just shoestring passed it in the middle from out of bounds, and he's making his strengths work to his advantage. Very impressive stuff offensively and defensively. Had a couple steals are already in the second half. Mo Basher gets the screen by James. Mo Basher back out, Malik Banks. Jordan White has it, throws it away, and another turnover by the Hawks. That's been the story of the second half. Fouls and turnovers by this Hawks team. Yeah, when Northwest Florida got to the above 70 point mark, they've scored at least 70 points. The last time they didn't score 70, you have to go back to November 10th against South Southern Union State Community College. They won that game 68 to 50. There goes Hines again, kicks it back. Sinclair, pump fake, good hesitation. The jumper doesn't go. <laughs> Tip back. Out of bounds. And but even even though Sinclair didn't make the shot, you know, the team is there in position to possess that offensive rebound. And and, and they're up by by 32 points right now, but they're playing every possession like it matters as they should. Yeah, and especially sorry to interrupt you, but especially in, you know, a shootout in a showcase like this where it's it's about oh, there's a dunk. Cameron by Cameron James, right as I was talking, but what I was saying, Conrad, was that in a showcase like this, you know, you got to showcase your talent. No matter what the score is, I know you want to win, obviously, but you got to showcase your talent, show what you got, and I think a lot of players are doing this so far. There's a wide open layup, Sinclair. Sinclair seems to have erased those three early fouls and is playing his game. Rasheed Jones takes the three. No good. I think it's going to go in every time he releases that jumper. So that's Jordan White with the ball. White driving inside. Tough layup. Doesn't get the roll. Tipped away. It's going to go the other way. Raiders ball. And guess who was on the touch with that one? Will Hines. Absolutely. Anywhere, everywhere, all the time. And, I mean, this this Raiders team, I mean, they they – they do not flinch. I mean, no. they. There's no panic. Even, even in their game last night, as we keep going back to against Florida Southwestern State, had every reason to panic. Didn't panic. Went to overtime. Got got to business and finished. Timeout here on the floor. It's going to be up by Northwest Florida. We'll be right back. You're watching the 22nd annual JUCO Shootout. Don't go anywhere. a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. Welcome back to Eastern Florida State College. Alongside Conrad Volsh, I'm Max Gershon. 81 to 49 is our score. A dominating start to this second half uh, for Northwest State for Northwest Florida State. Uh, they've just taken complete control of this game, and a half that was pretty closely contested through one. Yeah, definitely 100. percent I mean, you would never have guessed that this was a 45 to 32 matchup to begin this second half, but the North, the Raiders have opened up with a 32 to 15 run in this second half. And I mean, they're showing why they're the number one team in the nation right now. Sinclair has, he gets it to our guy, Will Hines. We've been loving watching so far. And there's a layup, it will roll out. Sinclair trying to get the rebound. Ball is flying any, everywhere and it's gonna be last touched by Cameron James. It'll stay with the Raiders. As Jamal Sumlin's gonna check in for Rasheed Jones. And again, Sinclair doing his job, not getting sloppy. Again, had those three early fouls, and there he is again. Look at that, just missed, and then puts it in with the 
right-handed tip in. Sinclair getting active here in half number two. Under six minutes to play here in game one of our doubleheader coverage here at Eastern Florida State College. That one's out of bounds, deflected by Joe Manning. Again, relentless pursuit by this Raiders team. And I mean, every nearly everybody on that bench has gotten in and has played. Here's Gooden getting trapped in the corner, trying to make something happen. He's tripped up, and a foul is going to be called. That is on Sinclair, I believe, again. It is. That's his fourth foul. He's probably played about 12 minutes this game. Four fouls and up to nine team fouls for Florida or for Northwest Florida State. It's uh, almost doubled the amount of fouls here in half number two versus number one, but but like I mean I like what we've seen thus far from both of these teams. It's just you know when Northwest Florida State got going, they just it was just very hard to you know stop them or to force those uncharacteristic mistakes. They have made the second half adjustments and have come out firing. And um, that's what the great teams do in Hillsborough Community College. No, no, uh, no shortage of flowers for them either. It's just, you know, you haven't played this team since 2015 and it's been about eight years since the last time these two teams played each other. And it's, you know, it's been one of those games. One of one at the line gets the first one to go, so we'll get a second opportunity. 83-50 is our score. Northwest Florida looking like they're going to be undefeated here in this JUCO tournament. Will Hines is going to take it up the court for Northwest Florida State. Raiders who are runners up in last year's tournament. Looking to one up that season for the championship this year, and they've definitely got the teams and team and coaching staff to do just that. Will Hines, Joe Manning has it. Guarded by Ziegler inside, what a find, and then the slam by Sinclair. It's all started with that pass by Manning. Here is Gooden with the spin move. Hines falls to the ground, but Gooden's able to put it in. Feel the electricity lit yeah. on that Raiders side after that dunk. It's the fourth total dunk of this game, second one for the Raiders. Manning inside back to Sinclair, gives it to someone. Someone kicks it to Trey Brown, and it goes. Trey Brown. Trey Brown extends the lead now to 34 with four and a half minutes left. Good and going inside. Tough floater doesn't fall. Rebound Brown. Hasn't been the efficient night we were expecting from Dominic Gooden or really much of this team, as that one is going to be saved right there by Manning inside Hines. Hines dishes it, Brown, the reverse layup is good. How in the world Hines was able to deflect that pass that was mishandled and it still kept it alive? Unbelievable basketball there. Gooden drives in, gets the open layup, and it won't fall again. Nothing falling for him. There's a foul and one. Cameron James, but you just feel, Conrad, defensively that 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 last dunk by Sinclair was, was really the last straw uh, as far as the intensity defensively goes for the Hawks. Well, and it brought, the, it brought an energy back into the room, you know, for either side. I mean, it, you know, you get into a game where the score kind of gets out of control for one side, and it just turns into sometimes not lackadaisical, but more of just trading buckets and, you know, whatever. But that, that dunk... Is, is something, no matter what the score is or what point in the game, if you can get a dunk, that's huge electricity for your sideline, and it got the entire bench going. Absolutely. Again, 89-55 is our score. Under four minutes to play. Um, make sure fans to join us at 2 p.m. for our second game coming up next, Gulf Coast State College versus St. Petersburg College to conclude. This is a phenomenal Juco shootout. has went very well so far and going to continue, obviously, to the 2 o'clock game. And, Again, like to thank Eastern Florida State College for hosting this great tournament and letting us full sale students come be a part of it. So appreciate that and uh, hope this this relationship continues for years to come. For sure, got to give got to give a little bit of a of a uh, list of Dominic Coleman, the head coach of 
uh, Hillsborough's resume. This is his first season as a head coach here. He played here uh, back in his college days, ended up getting a scholarship to the University of Colorado, was Mr. Basketball in Florida in 2002, played around the G League, uh, was a G League champion back in 2008-9 season, uh, participated in the, the Thunder and the Lakers mini camp in Summer League, also played in Finland, Belgium, Ukraine, France, and Austria. Wow. That's a good resume right there, Conrad. Yeah. I'm just happy I woke up this morning. <laughs> That's my resume. No, but all jokes aside, I mean, he gets it. He gets the Juco route, and I think he's a great guy to have to coach at his alma mater here. Joe Manning gets triple teamed as he crosses half court. Saeed Mobasher's done a great job defensively, really all game. As some on the alley-oop, and another slam by Sinclair. You see the electricity from that bench. They're doing TikTok dances again. <laughs> what makes a dance a TikTok dance? I don't know. Maybe that's just the age coming out of that me. Could but be. but that uh, could be. I don't know. We'll just call it dancing, yeah, I guess. Yeah, we call it dancing. That's turned over by Gooden. Struggles continue offensively as Hines with the floater. It's going to be tipped and missed. Boy, I don't know. If he didn't tip that, that might have gone in straight away. There's a step back. Bobasher has it. Guarded by Hines with some speed. Wide open is Ziegler in the corner. Ziegler misses that one. Hines again after the rebound by Sinclair. He's going to slow it down. 2.50 to go in half number two. A dominating performance by the best team in community college basketball in the country. There's a spin move and a jumper doesn't fall. Rebounded by James. James spins at half court. Trying to end this game on a positive note if you're Hillsboro. James Ziegler, his three pointer. Again, no good. He struggled from outside the arc today. So he's still shooting with confidence. It just not been his night and really hasn't been a lot of these Hawks players night. 56 points with two minutes to go. Not where they wanted to be in this game. Out they go, stolen away by White. Gooden pushing the floor. Mo Basher takes a couple steps and a tough layup goes. Another guy I've been impressed with, Conrad, is Saeed Mo Basher. Been high intensity all game. Yeah, unselfish basketball player and you know, trying to contribute in any way he can for this uh, for this Hawks team. Hines just trying to drain as much clock as he can. Now drives in, kicks it out. Joe Manning fakes the three, drives in, takes the jumper, and no good. Rebounded by Manning. Kicks it out. Will Hines back to Sinclair. It's good. Sinclair is on fire as we wrap up this game with a minute 30. He's been phenomenal in the second half offensively. Yeah, and I mean, just unselfish basketball. Will Hines could have easily taken the taken the, the the deep shot, but decided to pass it off to Sinclair, and Sinclair open. And, I mean, he's taken advantage of it. He's had those four fouls, but he's still playing quality basketball, and you love to see that. Dominic Gooden trying to make some last stamps on this game. Inside, a good Euro. Look at that hop step right Jordan there White. from Jordan White. Fancy move. Still a 33-point lead, though, for the Raiders. As about a minute to go here in game one of our doubleheader coverage. There's a foul. It's going to be on Will Hines, an offensive foul. And a few mistakes we've seen from him this half. Yeah, that's the 11th foul there by the Raiders, the 19th of the second half. Again, only had 10 that whole first half, but... Now we got a minute left here in the second half. Gooden pulls the deep three, rolls out. Nothing falling for Gooden. Everything's in and out. Rebound, no good. Trey Brown fights for it. Manning going the other way. Joe Manning gives it to Simpkins. Now pressed by Gooden as there's 40 seconds remaining in this ball game. And that ball goes flying out of the hands of Trey Brown. They'll get a foul on White. It's Jordan White. 34 seconds remain in this game. This is the third game of the year where Northwest Florida has scored at least 90 points. Last time they did that was 
Back on the 20th against Coastal Alabama South. Won 106 to 83. The game before that was back on November 1st against Southern Union State Community College where they won 90 to 42. So high powered offense team throughout this season. Lowest amount of points they've scored in a game. 68-50 back on November 10th. 30 seconds left in this ball game as White's gonna take a three. And that one will fall in. Three pointer for, jo for Jordan White. Cuts the deficit to 32 as this game is gonna wrap up. Mo Basher still giving 100% on defense as this is gonna be dribbled out. And five seconds left. Just hiding the ball for Mo Basher as this game is going to come to an end. 95 to 63 is our final score. Northwest Florida State, the Raiders, proving why they're the number one team in the country. Yeah, they moved to 12 and one on the season. They started the season winning their first 10 in a row before they lost to Daytona State College back on November 28th. But I mean, they, they, I mean, that, I don't know if that Daytona State College game was a good thing that happened to them, yeah. but thus far they, they had a game last night against Florida Southwestern State that they could have lost, you know, but they, they had no panic, went to overtime and took care of business. And, and uh, again, these games are great to have not only for scouts to, to take these guys to the next level, the next playing season, but to get you ready for the rest of the season. I mean, they're going to have uh, Kapaya Lincoln Community on December 8th and Eastern Florida State College um, on the 9th at home. Um, so again, great uh, great things to do for these for these teams. And on the other side for uh, Hillsborough Community College, they'll be they'll have a good few games coming up as well. Yeah, make sure to join us for the 2 p.m. game, Gulf Coast State College versus St. Petersburg College. You see them warming up right now. Conrad Bolch, Max Gershon, and all of our production crew, thank you guys very much for watching. Like I said, make sure to join us for the 2 p.m. game. And we got the post game coming up with Brandon Ferguson. a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. Welcome into the post game show. I am Brandon Ferguson alongside Curtis D. Acker, and we just seen the Northwest Florida Raiders take down the Hillsborough, Hillsborough Hawks by a score of 95 to 63. Now, in that second half, really, the Raiders really put it on the Hawks. What did you see in that second half that, that catapult, or catapulted the Raiders to take this victory? Yeah, the Raiders were dominant on the inside. They did not allow, typically, you'll see a lot from Cameron Jones. And Dominic Gooden, who, as we were talking about, likes to find that inside shot. The Raiders were just shutting that down here in the second half. And with this being uh, a, quite a scoring uh, difference, we saw some young players going for the Raiders. Yes. Yes, we got Will Hines, Brandon Sinclair, who turns out is an alley-oop machine. And then Joe Manning, along with Trey Brown. Some names that we don't typically see for Northwestern Florida, but... They ended up getting some playing time today and showed really well in that time that they got. Yep, Will Hines was running the offense all second half, and Joe Manning was ma uh, making and taking shots all over the court. And uh, yesterday, Northwest Florida, the Northwest Florida Raiders had 74 total points, and they hit that in today's game at the nine-minute mark. So they were definitely seeing something more offensively, definitely seeing the rim better today. And Hillsborough's 2-3 zone, the Hawks were having a field day on it. They were torching it all game. 
And like you said, Cameron Jones uh, became more aggressive in the second half. I, I agree. And I think you were talking about early in the uh, before the game started, just the athleticism or the size that Northwest Florida State had over Hillsborough. I think that played a huge factor, along with not having Jaden Az Azomo tonight, who is out with a right right foot injury. Just that was that was a big key factor in the, in not having his size out there. Yeah, Azomo's uh, defensive. The defensive ability definitely would have helped against the height of Brandon Sinclair we've seen in that second half. And we have another game ahead of us, Gulf Coast. Coming up next, I am Brandon Ferguson alongside Curtis D. Acker, and we're going to have Clayton Walner and Randy Silver on the call for that game. <laughs> 